the importance of formative assessment where the assessment process supports the learning process is now well established and a key aspect of formative assessment is good feedback and the work of John Hattie in terms of effect sizes really spell out just how important this is. That if you look at these effect sizes here, the feedback between teachers and students 0.75, peer assessment 0.63. Now you might be saying, well, okay, what does that mean? Well, there you go. If you look at effect sizes, uh, 1.0 uh, is massive and it's typically associated with those kind of following um, improvements in attainment. So feedback is a pretty important achievement uh, promoter. So how does this work? Well, quality feedback will clarify what is good performance to students, be clear about goals, criteria, standards, identify the gaps, which is fundamental to know. If you don't know what the gaps are, how do you fill them? and then to generate what is necessary in terms of knowledge, skill development to, to close those gaps. And in that process, um, build a, a sense of growth mindset in positive beliefs and self-esteem as one sees oneself learning from effort, um, performance increases. And the very important thing that we want to develop in students is eventually the ability that they can self-assess their learning and also, it's a two-way process. As we're getting feedback from students, we can modify our own instructional strategies accordingly. A nice quote to finish with from John Hattie. So, do reflect on that. That's what we want students to do at the end of the day. Okay, how does a feedback model work? Well, you always have a learning goal. doesn't matter what it is in the context of projects. It's to get the project done well. And what this will be is a a need to reduce the discrepancy between where one is now in terms of perhaps starting the product or as the product moves through its development um, to reduce the discrepancy between the current situation, understanding performance, and eventually meeting the competencies and achieving the desired goal. And this involves making the thinking process and learning visible, which we've mentioned before. So as a teacher, the facilitator, you need to understand where the students are and help them where necessary to perhaps reframe their goals. It may be too um, optimistic in the context of time and resource facilities. And to scaffold that process, provide guidance to help them frame their future option, what to do next. And that's a key aspect of facilitation, is now, when we actually give feedback, feedback can be on a number of areas. It can be on understanding the task itself, the requirements, key aspects about what needs to be done. But it also can be about the process of thinking. Maybe students are not doing sufficient analysis or they're not interpreting the data as well as they could be. So your feedback may be focusing on the thinking process. And finally, it may well be also on their self-management. The group may not be um, getting on as well as they could. They may not be maximizing strengths and weaknesses. They may not be thinking more holistically about the old project. So when you give feedback, you can be operating within these various dimensions. And all that contributes to is ultimately improving movement towards the learning goal.